Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Women with visual impairments can be anything they dream they can be. They build their future based on their dreams. They have the vision, the determination and the desire to follow long roads of hard work to rise to the top. Welcome to the European Blind Union, EBU, the voice of blind and partially sighted people in Europe. EBU is committed to promote gender equality and women's empowerment. It's been a long and sometimes very rocky road for blind and partially sighted women to show their capability to gain the positions they should have had for many years already. But now they've succeeded in some way I really am proud to say that now we find women in many, many functions, leading positions within the national organizations as well as in EBU. But we still are on our way and it's necessary that more and more women will gain those positions and be able to show that they in some way are even better and more sophisticated that men are. So let's go ahead and I really would like to encourage our Women's Network to keep on going that road. The Roads That Lead to the Top, a video on blind and partially sighted women's leadership, is a short video portraying the stories of 10 women who are blind or partially sighted and traces the paths they followed towards pursuing their dreams. De kleje ze i malo z vedra vodu, pri bistrem studencu vodica. My name is Metka Paušić. I come from Slovenia. Uh, I'm 48 years old. I'm a social worker by profession, uh, but I have always enjoyed singing and acting. Hi! My name is Paola Morandi. I was born in the north of Italy. I have done lots of different types of work. I'm a professional English teacher, a translator, a writer. I've published uh, a novel and a poetry book and lots of poems in different anthologies. Hello, my name is Barbara Martin Muñoz. I'm a Spanish, 42 years old, and I am currently working as the manager of the Technical Office of European Affairs at ONCE the Spanish National Organization of the Blind, and since October 2015 as the second Vice President of the European Blind Union, EBU. My name is Ellen Kautijs. I'm 46 years old and I'm totally blind. I work as a senior policymaker strategy at the National Institute of Public Health and Environment. Hello everyone, I'm Luciana Loprete and I was born in Botticello on 13th of December 1966. For 31 years, I've been working at the Calabria Regional Government. Hello, my name is Un Jönner Hagen. I come from Norway, and I am today the elected uh, president of the Norwegian Blind Association. Um, I am 56 years old. My name is Dutti Matsile. I'm 30 years old. Um, I graduate as a civil engineer tomorrow with a Master's of Science and I also have a bachelor's degree in theology. I work in FEM, which is one of the, the biggest international development organizations in fin Finland. I'm a human rights advisor and I focus on the rights of people with disabilities, on freedom of religion or belief and on linguistic rights. Hello, I'm Zana Jajic. I come from Montenegro and I'm 48 years old. I am a physical therapist. I have been working at the medical center in Plevja for 29 years. Currently, I am the president of the Union of the Blind of Montenegro. My name is Stefania Leone. I'm Italian and 49 years old. I am a computer engineer and I work in a leading Italian ICT company. 
I'm Virginia Carcedo, the CEO of Insert Employment, the association of Fundación Once Expert in Training and Employment of People with Disabilities. In my work, I do a lot of advocacy towards the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and also towards different European and international bodies. Um, we aim to change the position of people with disabilities globally, um, to empower the people themselves and to make sure that different legislation and different um, processes in the society are inclusive of people with disabilities. I finished the regular school and I did what I wanted, which was going to the university to study law. It was in 2007 when I was offered my current position and I have to say that it's my dream job. First of all, because it's working in ONCE. Second of all, because it's working in its international level and the things that we are dealing here are very important. And third of all, because I'm working in the institutions of the European Union. And fourth of all, because I work in English. Anyway, I, while I was working in this position, I realized that I really enjoyed politics in terms of the legislative procedure, procedure and how things are dealt. So I decided to start studying through the Open University in Spain, politics. And I'm almost there. I have only one subject left and I will have my degree. I have a senior position in ADV, an association of blind and visually impaired people, and in FISH, one of the two most important federations of people with disability. Um, my work is to develop software and to test websites. My career in the Union began when I was elected for President of Local Organizations of the Blind for Plevja and Jablia. I took over a rundown establishment, which was unorganized, but very quickly, with my team, I managed and totally transformed this organization in a healthy and successful one. This motivated some people to not nominate me for the position of the President of the Union of the Blind of Montenegro. By education, I am uh, a political scientist. Uh, I have um, a master and a beginning of a PhD in political science. And I have had um, leading positions uh, the last 20 years. Uh, I started uh, to work in the uh, Norwegian social security system. Uh, after that, I worked uh, also with development in foreign countries. Uh, and when I returned to Norway, I uh, started to work for the Norwegian Association for the Blind and Partially Sighted. And, uh, and one of my main uh, uh, interests was um, uh, working with rehabilitation and, uh, and trying to obtain political goals uh, within the fields of rehabilitation. I have also been um, the uh, Secretary General of the EBU. I was um, president of an international club in the United States at the time and it kept on going even while I was losing my vision. It was very successful. I founded um, a family service center in the south of Italy when I moved back to Italy for military wives and families. And then when I moved to Rome in 1998, I continued working as an English teacher privately. I worked for an office and taught business English. And, um, and uh, I became a volunteer. I founded an association in uh, 2009 called Viviveo. It's a non-profit organization that does lots of volunteer work for the community. Uh, for children, students, elderly people, and visually impaired people. Because of that, because I have concentrated on helping people in general, not just blind people, last year I was awarded the uh, Woman of the Year Prize called uh, Donne con la D maiuscola, which is translated as Women with a capital W. A few years ago, I graduated from Slovenian Academy of Theatre, Radio, Film and Television uh, with a master's degree in speech forms. This was the biggest opportunity uh, to develop my talent and 
resulted in a monodrama performance entitled I Regret Nothing that has actually become quite a hit here. Uh, very soon I will have the 100th performance uh, in my hometown. In my organization, I believe they managed to stand for my work. In fact, for 12 years, I've been representing the Italian Union of the Blind and Partially Sighted in the province of Catanzaro with steady passion. This also led me to become the chair of a local office of the Italian Union of the Blind and Partially Sighted in 2005, where there had never been a chairwoman until then, a person like me who set aside all what was his or her needs to devote soul and body to others. I started with a study health sciences at the university and after finishing my study, it was quite hard to find a job. I started as a trainee at the Ministry of Housing, Spatial Planning and Environment. This traineeship gave me a great possibility to try and to work at different places every few months and on a different subject. After this traineeship, I went on and worked as a policymaker, health and environment at the ministry. And I stepped over to the National Institute of Public Health and Environment, starting working as a researcher in indoor environment. Now I work here four years as a senior policymaker strategy. It is about making the strategy for the organizations, changes that come, how can we fit in with changes in the future, what kind of research do we do have to do, how to communicate with citizens and all kind of stuff. Like every journey to success, the roads they traveled on were not always easy to follow. Oftentimes these roads were bumpy and winding, were not paved with rose petals, but were blocked by many barriers and challenges that impeded their rise. In my working life, um, I think the biggest challenges I've had when it comes to disability is that earlier I always mentioned disability in my, my CV or my application and I never even got interviewed. Um, a few years ago I then, I then decided that I'll just stop putting a mention about my disability in any papers because I was thinking that people have a lot of prejudice and people just don't know what the disability is and what I can do despite of my disability. Um, and that was one of the sort of key uh, changes that made a difference. Because when I get into an interview, um, that's when the people actually encounter me and they, they see me and they have the possibility to ask questions and I have the possibility to tell and show what I actually can do. In general, I think working as a professional, as an advisor, when you're a woman um, of 30 years old, I think that's always a challenge. There's always people who are older and wiser and, and more experienced. Certainly, there were more than a few obstacles. The disinterest of institutions that are too often used to interacting with men only. The distrust of some of our members who did not believe in the strength of a woman at their service. But the most important challenge was making women and families accept what the situation of a person with disability is, that he or she has the right to be treated on equal terms as the others and be given the same opportunities. Uh, being a, um, a female leader has also brought uh, challenges. Uh, I think most the most uh, difficult one is meeting with um, uh, colleagues or male uh, colleagues in, in more or less at the same level. And uh, it is not often the easiest task to, to uh, stay up for feminine rights uh, when you are amongst mostly men. I'm a working mother, so I work here for 32 hours a week and besides that I have a family life with two kids of 10 and 12 years. So I have to help the kids to school, join them while they have sports, matches and things. 
and also I do sports myself. Sports is one of the things that I like most to do. When I accepted the nomination for the presidency, a group of male colleagues attempted to manipulate my way of working. However, I was able to prove the truth and that justice is still possible with love for work, persistence, courage and goodwill. With the executive director and professional services, I successfully managed the organization. We are a recognizable union in the region. When we started to put the performance together, we were choosing whether to play this role as a blind person or a seeing person. In everyday life, I try not to stand out, uh, be as regular as possible, so we choose to play a seeing person. During our study of the play, Professor Gubenschek reminded me of body and face gestures that I didn't know from everyday life. I could feel him. He described me everything very well. I trained every movement until it became natural, a part of me. The other challenge is the attitude of journalists and people who invite to perform because they wish to emphasize my blindness and make me to a theater attract attraction. I decided at the beginning not to advertise my blindness. A play is a play. I'm very angry when I see articles entitled Blind Actress. I understand their need to attractiveness, but for me it's a stigma. I like my work, but it's a tough job for a blind person because the quick evolution of uh, uh, technologies is too fast for our assistive technologies. So my daily challenge is to remain operational in order to feel good and don't be discriminated. But these women had a reason to keep going, a path to follow and a target to pursue. They had the passion, the drive and the motivation to deploy a number of strategies in order to reach their full leadership potential. My main uh, important strategy, I think, has always been to look upon my loss of vision uh, as not only a um, uh, disadvantage, but also an advantage. It can be uh, seen as a possibility to, uh, for instance, uh, uh, find solutions in, uh, in way of thinking and also uh, find different solutions than, uh, than the most uh, obvious one. And also I think one of my other strategies is also to be, to be open-minded and, uh, and uh, take into consideration uh, uh, all solutions, all possibilities and uh, try to uh, operate in an ethical um, manner. Uh, I think that is very important. And, uh, but, and I do think that we need uh, female role models. It was not necessary to implement any particular strategy to succeed in what seems normal to me today. It was just being myself, not allowing anyone to decide for me, and above all, striving for everybody's welfare. Of course, in order to succeed, you must always be up to date, attend specific trainings and know very well the subjects you are dealing with. To me, uh, I'm a normal person, I'm Barbara Martin, but I'm committed. I do enjoy the work I do. I do believe that equal opportunities are needed, that the work for improving many lives in this world is necessary, and that's why I could manage to get what I am have attended seminars that aim to strengthen the organizations of people with disabilities and also trainings to acquire self-sufficient skills that help me to be active in the work of the Union of the Blind of Montenegro. My strategy is to work hard, to study a lot, but also to ask for help to my colleagues that are very kind with me. 
um, for don't be discriminated, it's important to be believable, to speak only about things that we really know and we have a, a personal experience about. But I think the only way to combat that is is not is is not, to not to care about the the ideas people might have, but just keep on pushing. Um, in terms of disability, I think for me, my strategy has always been to be open, um, to tell people that they are allowed to ask and there's no, no stupid questions and then for me to answer. Of course, when it gets too personal, I don't answer, but, but in general, people, don't, they're not mean, they're just curious or they don't know how much I see or um, what I need for a meeting um, to be inclusive. So I've been involved um, in different NGOs in, in volunteering since I was a teenager. But for me at least it has been important to start with non-paid positions, put yourself um, into places where you can learn and where you can participate. Um, and that's, that's the way, that's where you learn, that's also where you create networks. And networks are really important in finding new possibilities. But the most important thing is to keep busy and to make your life useful. You can always make your life useful when you're blind. It doesn't matter if you don't see. You can still touch and feel and smell. There are so many other things that you can do. There were a lot of times in my life that I hit the bottom. Luckily, there is something in me that resists difficulties and wants to go on, to go up. I am lucky to be stubborn, curious, hardworking, to expect a lot of myself. I learn from books, spirituality, psychotherapy, people with simil similar experience. Use your strength, choose your battles. It seems a bit easy maybe to say so, but it's important that you think about well, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. When you are clear in what they are, you can, it can help you. Ask for help if you need so and think positive and easy. One of the simple challenges that I had was to take my cup of coffee every day because they use a touch screen at the coffee machine. We made a very simple thing so that I can do it myself. And as visually impaired women, we are thought that to see life is a challenge. To face and fight for our independence, we are training on a daily basis, has principles to success that are to challenge the status quo, possesses confidence without attitude, think beyond themselves and be lifelong learners. We have to feel confident on our capability and work every day to achieve our personal and professional goals. We need more women in the leadership circle to achieve these ends. But the truth and more important fact is that the challenges of yesterday are the opportunities of today. At times when things might get tough and the road ahead might not seem that easy, it is always motivating to listen to some inspiring words that might empower you and guide you forward towards that journey to the top. My message for other blind and partially sighted women is Keep on going and think positive. Be flexible, be positive and make your disability help, help you in reaching your targets. You need to believe in yourself, you need to keep on trying, you need to challenge others, you need to show that, that you are able, you are capable, no matter the disability. When you lose your vision, life doesn't just simply stop, it just keeps on going and uh, there's just so much we can do and we can do even more. Life goes on even when you can't see. Prove to the world um, that women are capable, that women with disabilities can go wherever they want and can 
work with it wherever they want. There are many women that are very courageous at this point, that they give their lives and showing and proving that the better world is, is, is possible. The message that I want to convey to women is that you should never fall. You should bear on ethical values and above all feel alive and part of something that might seem bigger than us. But in the end, it shrinks to be what we have been created for. That is to give life and above all give the relief that everyone deserves. My message to women who want to engage in this business is that you have to be well-intentioned, be brave, have a vision, a mission, a strategy, to completely commit to your work and that your work will be successful and useful. I haven't a universal advice to give. I just think that to be considered as a normal woman, also if blind, it's important to work hard and to study a lot, to be prepared better than the others, but at the same time remaining simple, honest and strong. I learn to live life as it is with all its troubles, but with time I cherish a small moment of beauty and joy more and more. When it gets hard, I remember the uh, words of Tone Pauček, our poet. If you fail once or twice what you like to do, try again and once more and anew. Be authentic inside of your recite, a wealth or knowledge waiting to surface. Trust in your own knowledge, experience and accomplishment. Don't play into imposter syndrome. You have what it takes. Find strong mentors and support other blind or visually impaired women colleagues. Work smart to make the world a better, safer and fair place. And do not forget that, as Gandhi says, strength do not come from physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will. I would like to advise all women to take chances, uh, be prepared. And it's a saying that says that uh, to compete uh, with men, you must make sure that you are always the best one. You must always uh, prepare yourself to be a little bit better, a little bit more knowledgeable uh, than your uh, uh, men colleagues. But on the other hand, that is not really so difficult. So good luck to you. <laughs> For further information, please contact EBU at www.euroblind.org. EBU, the voice of blind and partially sighted people in Europe. This video is supported under the Rights, Equality and Citizenship Programme 2014 to 2020 of the European Commission. With special thanks to the following participants. Wolfgang Angerman, EBU President, Barbara Martin Monoz, Ellen Kujis, Luciana Loprete, Voice Manuela Esposito, Metka Pavsic, Paola Morandi, Stefania Leoni, Titi Madsinen, Ern Leone Hagen, Virginia Casedo, Zana Dacic, Voice Erika Christofi, Narrator Diana Marchidis, music composed and performed by Valeria Patali, editing and animation DUD Advertising Studio, support Fanny Lambrou, coordinated by Maria Kiriakou. Copyright EBU 2017, all rights reserved. <laughs>